In the spring of 2013, the Hokey Bird traveled to the lowest level of outer space on a weather balloon. So a student group called ATEX planned the voyage. So ATEX stands for the Atmospheric Teaching Experiment, which is an educational outreach and design organization that focuses on the launch and recovery of a high altitude weather balloon payload. And we also teach uh, K through 12 students focusing on fourth through sixth grade. So if we wanted to actually use something that we could own and build ourselves, a weather balloon is the logical choice. We run this organization and, and do these activities, these outreach and design activities, because it's a lot of fun and we're getting extremely valuable experience while we're doing it. This time that experience involved learning that even months of preparation and planning cannot account for every variable. For this mission, the team upgraded from using a styrofoam cooler for the payload to deploying a custom engineered capsule that they thought would give them more flexibility in data collection. This new design created some surprises and tense moments for the ATEX team. And like, if he were to go back and resolder, what are the chances that it's going to break again? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. So it's just like a single thing that we, if we did that, how long would it take? First problem was a hardware issue where we had sheared a wire, and that the solution to that problem was that we just took the payload back to the lab, resoldered the wire, and that solved the issue. That was a fairly quick fix. Um, the second issue was a software issue where we had uh, updated the entire software package. Uh, from the test launch to the launch event uh, where we actually launched the Hokey Bird payload. So what we had to do is we had to revert back to the software package that we were using for the test launch and that was able to fly successfully. Once the balloon was finally in the air, they thought that all was well, but another technical difficulty cropped up. When we were flying, we actually hit a jet stream which caused the balloon to travel at a horizontal velocity in excess of 190 miles an hour. Uh, commercial GPS sensors, which are the kinds that we use, they have government restrictions on them that won't allow them to exceed a certain altitude or a certain velocity. Uh, the GPS sensor cut off. So we were not able to use anything from this launch. You know, it wasn't a total failure. We were able to recover the payload, which is huge, because we can reuse the hardware, so that's a big deal. And the Hokie Bird did go up to what we estimate is about 100,000 feet. Though they can't know what town they'll find the balloon in, they do know where it will be. As always, it always lands in a tree, and this time it landed at about a 60-foot pine tree with about a 9-inch diameter trunk. And the landowner was nice enough to cut it down with a chainsaw for us, which was uh, expedited the process. And then the tree was estimated at about $7, which we are forwarding to the landowner. Although they didn't get any new data, the spring 2014 launch was a success in terms of learning how to improve future designs. The software packages that we're flying need to be tested a lot more thoroughly and the entire payload needs to be integrated before the actual launch. A lot of times when we do this, uh, the final integration takes place at the launch. Let's go! Hokies! Let's go! Hokies! Alright, let go. Let's go! 